Question. Thank you, Kerr. Minister, um, this is to seek an update from you on the implementation of the Action Plan for Rural Development. Um, given that I listened to you most weekends in our constituency, I can nearly anticipate the response, but I want you to focus in on a comment that you made last summer, that other ministers were dumping stuff on your department. Uh, you may not have used the word dumping, but that's what you meant, that all rural services and all rural issues were going to be left to your department. I want to see what engagement you've had with other ministers about what they should be doing in their departments as opposed to leaving it all to your department. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Thank you very much. I'm delighted that you're so happy that I'm doing so well with my department. Um, okay, hello, thank you. Um, the Action Plan for Rural Development was published in January 2017 as the first whole of government initiative to support the economic and social progress of rural Ireland. The cross-department approach of the Action Plan to support rural communities and rural benefits is benefiting rural areas in many ways. It is driving job creation, improving access to services and enhancing the quality of life in rural Ireland. The Action Plan uh, contains a number of measures for delivery across a number of departments and agencies aimed at enhancing local services, including in the area of healthcare, schools and initiatives addressing mental health and isolation. For example, the delivery of 18 primary care centres in rural areas was a commitment under the plan, and these are all now open and fully operational. My own department has provided funding to the men's sheds to support the great work they do to address mental health and isolation in communities. There are now over 450 sheds across the country. My department also invested £6.9 million in seniors alert schemes in 2018, and there are now over 53,000 people being supported by the schemes. There are, these are just some examples of the measures being progressed and are, and are in addition to a very substantial investment which my department has made in rural communities through programmes such as the Town and Village Renewal Scheme, LEADER, the Outdoor Recreation Infrastructure Scheme, CLAR, and more recently the Road Regeneration and Development Fund. A monitoring committee which comprises senior representatives of, of relevant government departments and key rural stakeholder interests oversee progress on the implementation of the action plan. In addition, my officials are in a regular contact with their colleagues in other government departments on a regular basis in relation to the progress of the relevant measures. Progress reports on the implementation of the action plan are published twice yearly on the government.ie website. The action plan reaches the end of its three-year cycle this year. My department is currently developing a new rural policy for Ireland, which will be launched in the new year. As with the current action plan, the new policy will reflect a whole of government approach to supporting rural Ireland. Thank you very much, Deputy Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Thank you Chairman. Um, Minister, you spoke about improving access to services, you spoke about enhancing quality of life, and you spoke about healthcare. The CSO last week published the statistics. Um, that showed the average distance from services in rural areas compared to urban areas is quite there's a huge difference and a huge disparity. So the average distance uh, in many rural areas uh, to a HSC emergency department was more than 20 kilometres, in rural areas is 30 kilometres. In our own county, in Mayo, in Donegal, in Galway, in Leitrim, Roscommon, there's higher average distances, and those distances are actually increasing. Basic community services such as supermarkets, shops are closing and there's a higher distance uh, to travel. So in terms of the new plan, what specific initiatives are you going to undertake to ensure a basic level of services at an accessible distance? Um, you know, a lot of the initiatives you mentioned are worthy and welcome, but unless we have basic services, we will not encourage people to remain in communities. And if people have to take a medical journey um, on roads which may not be good, and we have seen this morning in that very tragic case in Donegal the difficulties of ambulance access. Um, we need to make sure that the basic services are in place. Minister. Uh, first of all, in, in relation to the CSO report, uh, it was an interesting report, but you or I could have given that report. We both uh, live in rural Ireland. We know the distances people have to travel to services. That's why, with particularly with my own department and with the schemes I have, that's why we built the 18 health centres to make it easier for people to, 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 to uh, get to services. And I suppose, you know, I was just reading there the other day uh, from that report, it's no different in rural England or rural Spain. We're not going to be able to have hospitals in every town and village. We're not going to have, you know, the bigger services in every town and village. But the one thing that we have, Deputy, and you'll have to agree to this, we have a quality of life in rural Ireland that they don't have elsewhere. As where you may have services here in Dublin City, 
You look at here this morning, or look at after three o'clock here today, at the congestion and the way, the way people have to stay in their cars. And I really feel sorry for them. Early in the morning they're travelling, late in the evening they're travelling. And, you know, the one thing that we have in rural Ireland is quality of life. In relation to what I'm doing and my department is doing, we have, over the, the, the last three years, we have really, really, with the Town and Village Scheme, the Rural Regeneration Scheme, the Outdoor Recreation Scheme, and all these schemes, we're putting facilities in place, we're putting jobs in place, and even with the jobs, uh, out the jobs that was created last year, every 10 jobs that was created, six of these jobs were created in rural Ireland. Thank so you. we have to get more jobs into the region, more jobs into the areas, and then more services will follow. Absolutely. Uh, I, I agree with you. Quality of life, etc., etc. But quality of life doesn't put butter on the potatoes, Minister. Unless you have services, we won't be able to keep people. Unless you have... Um, it, it's a vicious circle. Without people, there's no services. Without services, there's no people. So there needs to be a minimum level of service. Uh, I don't want hospitals in every single corner, but I do want to know that if I ring an ambulance, uh, I won't spend hours waiting for one. And this year, um, I think the figures released for the first quarter of this year, our response times in seven of the eight ambulance regions countrywide uh, were worse than compared to last year. So if we have all this investment and all this investment in services, uh, why are the services getting worse? Why are people's experiences in services uh, getting worse in rural areas? Like, yes, quality of life is wonderful, but what we need in the plan is maybe a basic level of services that's guaranteed and then we build to deliver that basic level of services and we build to deliver a basic contract of access to other services so the people know if they need services they'll be able to get them. Thank you very much Deputy Final Comment Minister. Uh, I know that I'm stepping into an area of another minister but I don't mind. Uh, I have to say that it, the reason that that's, there's bigger demands in services now there's more people living in rural Ireland, not me saying it. And you're quoting from the CSO figures. The CSO figures will tell you now there's more people living and working in rural Ireland. There's more people moving back to rural Ireland. And of course, we're going to have to, uh, to, to up the, uh, the services, the ambulance services, the, the, the demands for hospitals, there's the demands for nursing homes, there's demands for school places. And we must, we will, well, that's what I will be doing with my colleagues. And you, you asked me the question earlier. That's what I will be doing in relation to the next plan that I have. I will be sitting down, I will get my, my department officials. We're going to have to be looking to see what's actually happening in rural Ireland, what services are going to be, what we need. And the resources as well is going to have to be put in to make sure that we provide the services that people need. And as you said yourself, Deputy, people in rural Ireland, they are entitled to have the services and have them at a reasonable distance from their home. But at the same time, as I said earlier, uh, you know, we can't have hospitals, we can't have, uh, you know, secondary schools in every village, but, but what we need is mm -hmm. that these services would be in, in a reasonable space in, and in a reasonable area and in reasons that people will be able to travel for. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're looking at the local, local link services. There's many other services there that we're trying to, you know, get rural people, give them the opportunity to bring them Thank to hospital appointments and assist them and help them in every way that we can. Well, my